Jeff, and you are taking over in our insurance discussions? Um, I can give you a little bit of uh, background on this. Um, I think, was it July? I believe it was July when um, the commission first voted, you know, the plan that was in place. And uh, since then, there's been some continuing discussions um, as far as uh, revisiting the contribution levels to the HSA. And um, well, what I wanted to do today um, is just give a little additional information out and let the commission kind of discuss it. At that meeting, we discussed um, where we fell um, insurance-wise um, between our comparable utilities. Um, at that time, we only had 2012 data. What I'm handing you right here is the 2013 data. Um, now, just kind of a bit of a disclaimer. Um, this is not intended to be a, uh, a high, this is just a high level summary of the health insurance. This isn't a detailed survey of um, health benefits for each of these utilities. What we wanted to point out is um, if somebody's looking at another position, these are probably the pieces of information they're going to ask about the health insurance when they're making an informed decision about taking a position or not. Um, and again, this is calendar year 2013 only. Um, it doesn't include the 2014 changes with the HSA. Again, it's snapshot today. Here's what health insurance is for our comparable utilities. Um, those numbers will go down in 2015 if our employees um, do take the HSA based on those contribution levels and the, uh, the lower cost of uh, health insurance. The premiums go down. So, um, again, there's a lot of information on there. I don't want to overwhelm you with numbers. Um, today, but just kind of looking at this, you can see out of our eight comparables, ourselves and several seven other comparables, uh, we are seven out of eight as far as if you take a look at what the premium costs are, what the deductible would be, um, less any contribution to an HSA or additional contribution that an employer may give an employee, um, taking a look at all those different pieces. Unusual at both Monash and the Panama Walk. Um, the employees pay nothing. They do, and at Sun Prairie, Sun Prairie has seven health plans available to them. Uh, what Sun Prairie does is they pay 100% of the lowest cost premium. So again, there's another instance mm -hmm. where you could have uh, no cost health insurance to the employee. Mm -hmm. Well, this is back on the agenda because I've had you know discussions with city folks and we've exchanged emails and I told mm -hmm. the mayor we would put this back on our agenda to to consider. So <clears throat> that's why it's there. One question that was asked um, I believe at the last uh, council meeting when I watched it was the uh, the cost of funding 2015 versus the city's plan. Um, that number comes out to right around 67500 is the additional cost, and I can give you just a real quick and dirty spreadsheet. I know that question was asked by one of the older people um, there. And um, what you're seeing here is the 2015, um, what was passed by the commission in July, and then what the city's doing. Um, I'm showing you our, our cost to fund the HSAs based on our current uh, employee makeup is right around $112,500. If all those employees would be under what the city's currently doing, um, that cost would be $45,000. So the difference is that $67,500. And what was the cost difference between our old insurance and what this is going to be to, to the utility? When we looked at, um, if we took, if we looked at the current plan, what we have today, <coughs> kind of extrapolated out with 4% increases over the next couple of years, and we looked at what the um, what the commission passed. Um, with that, uh, with the HSA funding, um, it saves about forty-three thousand dollars. Right around forty-four thousand dollars is the savings over two years um, to the commission. Savings to us. Savings to us. That's quite a savings. Yes. And how will it affect the employee? Um, are, are the way it's set up, because I cannot remember that, sure. uh, will it um, 
still be beneficial to them, uh, providing they, um, I think, don't we have a system where they have to, um, that the family checks in and, and um, make sure that they're healthy or something like that, because our plan's like that. We do have health risk assessments available right. to our employees. Um, in 2014, they receive a 5% reduction in health care costs if they completed the, H, the health risk assessment in 2013. So that is the cost, cost of, of uh, health, when you find out early if there's a problem, saves a heck of a lot of money down, down the line than if you wait till they get to say cancer from stage one to stage four. There's a lot of difference. So if you get things early enough, not only is it easier for the patient, but it's also easier on our insurance. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Right. I mean, I, what we had you know, talked about in the past, I mean, this is a big change in health insurance from what we've had in the past, but I think everybody's gonna to go towards the HSA because the other one is the price of it has escalated so much, right. it doesn't make sense to stay on it. So I guess what we had talked about at the last meeting was um, and what you approved and what we're reconsidering is you approved funding the deductibles for the employees the first two years of the new plan um, and the city has agreed to fund how much? A thousand or fifteen hundred the second year, or what? Or has it even been um, half of half what the deductible. first year, the full amount. Right. The, the second, second year, year half. half. Okay. Um, so naturally, they would like us to be consistent with them. I think. Uh, and Sue's wanting to speak. Well, she. Well, I think that's you know probably <coughs> what the emails have been. About. As, as I understand, I've been part of that, but. Uh, yeah, I think that's more just the consistency of the participants in the plan, and and so that's I think that's really the, the main issue. I think we all acknowledge that it is, you know, it's a change for everyone, and 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 Plan B is such that, you know, as Jim said, part of it is to make it less attractive so that we get more in the HSA. So so the numbers do look pretty high, but I think um, the HSA is, you know, we're we're trying to. Uh, really establish the HSA as, as the plan and I think people can kind of have more control over their their health care somewhat and um, so and um, regardless of what decision is made today um, you know it's, it's Jen and mine firm belief that uh, the Commission will do our due diligence in 2015 looking ahead and seeing what options are available um, for our employees for health care I know you know there's a lot of questions coming out with October 1st with the health care exchanges opening up um, for people to say what is health care going to look like for premiums in 2014. Um, the Office of the Commissioner of Insurance came out with their numbers this week and they look like pretty steep increases um, from their comparables. So I think, you know, again, we'll do our due diligence next year to see, you know, what is the best option for our employees. Maybe, maybe they're like everything else. They give you the absolute worst so that if it doesn't turn out that bad, they'll say, oh, well, we did really well. Look how good we did. <laughs> I think we're good. Are there any more questions of Jeff? And that deductible is 2000 2500 2, for a family and okay. yeah, 5000 at an individual, I think? 1250 at an individual. <coughs> And ours is 2500 Yeah, no. We, the second year. Kirk, that's what we okay. approved prior, correct. And the city's at half of that for their employees. I bet the city's not So they want us to go thousand. down to the... I'm sorry? Do you have the deductibles for 2015? I believe it was 500 um, and 1000 for their employees. Which isn't quite half. A little right? less than half, right. I guess I thought it was damp, but maybe, um, maybe I should just have to cross the guy over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've got it actually. You probably have it before I did it. Uh, HSA. And what, and what we did before. So yeah, 1250 and 2500 and, okay, 500 and 1000, you're right. What is that? So you're well, looking right, for what, yeah. a motion to well, continue what we've done or to change what we've done? What are we looking for here? Uh, that's up for the commission to decide. 
basically if you want to keep it the same as the city or continue to what we agreed upon. In that the long run, right. Jeff, do you think by uh, following the procedure that we have proposed of starting out with the 2500 and in the first year mean that in the end it will be more of a saving to us than going the way the city is doing? Um, that 2015 cost, you know, and that spreadsheet shows it's a $67,000 additional cost to the commission. So if funding levels tied into what the city is doing, then that money would be savings to the commission. To the utility and out of the employee's pocket. So the employee would be paying that difference. Okay. I guess that should be a, a decision, uh, as affecting a decision. Uh, how many of the city employees, what percentage, have uh, taken the HSA? I don't, they're all due, I think, Monday, so I really, I really can't. Yeah, all of the forms to be filled out. The open enrollment. In, open enrollment ends Monday. I mean, I haven't filled mine out yet either. I mean, I would, I shouldn't guess, but I would say it's, <coughs> it's, it's definitely more than half. It's going to be the majority. You just yeah, look at the I, costs. I, you can't justify yeah. staying on the old yeah. plan. I mean, just from a personal And there's a lot that haven't turned it in yet, so yeah. I think a lot of your employees are kind of, maybe we're waiting for this. Why are they meeting? waiting for a, I mean, I, I, that's not a fair question, Sue, I'm sorry. You know, what we do here has nothing to do with what they do. That, you know, you're, you're comparing completely two different work groups. You know, we're, you know, we're not funded, we're funded differently. Yeah, I don't know why anybody is comparing what we do here with what the city does. I think I agree with everything you said, other than they own us. So right, but exactly. you still run this as a business. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't, I mean, they've also hired us to run this business. They elected you to do that, correct? Right. Mm, yeah. And if we didn't do it adequately, they, we'd all be fired because yeah. they want to. We are basically making a profit. Yeah. If we didn't make that profit, we couldn't pay the city $1.5 million in taxes. Well, we'd have to pay that whether we were making money or not. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's, That's true. true. Well, and the, the city is, has the plan for you guys, and the city, and, and all of the participants, your employees are all participants in our plan, and I guess it's consistency, uh, you know, in the plan, and technically, they are city employees it's a, for it's a plan, most legal purposes. Who, who pays that premium should be, it well, shouldn't be fund, a concern of theirs. The, well, I mean, I'm assuming that the fund is paying, the, kind of the fund is paying the HSA A thousand premium. of the first year, I think, or eleven hundred of the first? We're paying, yeah, right, we're paying the, uh, the five hundred and one thousand, and the fund is paying that additional. For portion, the first year. For the first year. But right. the fund's not paying anything the second year. From what I understood, I don't know. But. Right. Well, yeah, you guys are, if, if you're paying something more than <coughs> what the city would be paying, then that, obviously that's coming out of That's that 60,000 right. number. Yeah. Well, you know, I know experience with this plan, it's tough to get the employees to stay on it because you usually underfund the employee. And there's a couple catastrophes that happen and that thousand dollars goes in one day and uh, you know if you want to keep in mind you also have to emphasize they have to continually <coughs> add to their HSC. And there are out-of-pocket limits like for a single person it's nineteen hundred dollars a year. Once for me for example I'll get twelve fifty funded you know through the HSA and then um, my premiums are only five percent of a smaller number and I, I mean once I re, if I reach the nine, 1900 I mean that's it I don't pay another penny for a prescription I don't pay another penny I don't pay any co-pays I don't pay any uh, co-insurance I don't pay anything it's limited and then that is I mean in plan B there was uh, there still is the limit too but I think you have to realize that too that there is there's limits but it, it's a you know it's a philosophical <laughs> debate really of of that and I certainly understand that you want to, you know, cushion the the impact on the employee or are willing to pay more 
towards their expenses. And you know, I, that's and the city can't tell you what you can and cannot do. And I evidently some city officials have expressed <laughs> how they, they feel yeah, how they feel me. that you should do it. And I'm beat up. You know, <laughs> so um, you know, it's uh, it's really but it's your it's decision, your decision, right? Um, and. I mean, we had a good discussion about this the last time we met on it, and I think we're having a good discussion on it on it today. Well, you know, maybe the, the correct city officials that disagree with us should be with us today. Well, they were. Uh, there was a death in the family of one person, and the other person had to go out of town. The other person was on vacation, and as I said, that's why I got to come. Well, I got she drew the I got to come. As I said, there was a mirror crossing our well, you know, maybe, maybe we should table this till they could be here. Well, I think. I, I, you know, it, it's just, it's a very, I think it's a very narrow issue, you know, a very simple issue for you of whether you want to be consistent with the city or not, and I, I don't, I think that's what they would tell you if they were here, they, they feel strongly that should, but there's no legal prerogative that you need to do that, there's no, you know, I, I mean, I guess I, to, to hold it over again, I, I think you're just, plus it's open enrollment ends on Monday, and I think Monday, exactly. in case yeah. some of your employees are, you know, thinking that this might impact their decision on how they want to uh, enroll, you know, I think you just probably, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but um, I think, you know, you have all the information in front of you and it's just a matter of whether you want to pay that extra money that second year, you know, towards your employees at HSA. We're all up in the air for 2016. Uh, I mean, we don't, we haven't, the city hasn't made any promises in terms of funding at that point, um, you know, and we're probably all going to be looking at this again at that time, so. Well, I think a lot of the employees already have made decisions based on the decision we made earlier. Well, because I, I would they, like to leave that alone. Yeah, I mean, because it, it escalated to be an issue soon after the meeting, I really have not had any official announcements to the employees or told them at all. We were even a little probably vaguer than we should have been in the meeting minutes because I knew we were going to have to go at this again. Um, so what they've heard has been strictly through, you know, word of mouth or the rumor mill, however you want to put it. Um, but I don't know, are they aware? Joe Long and I've been in so many meetings lately, I don't know whether they're aware or not. <laughs> yeah, the employees I've had contact, t contact with are on the assumption that it's going to be funded for two years. They're, they're aware of the debate between the city and what our position is. And most of them I've talked to are also aware that the commission can change that. Today they can change that in six months, they can change that in 14 months. I mean, that's a commission decision too. That. So the decision is going to be, do we change or do we leave it the way it is or what? what is it? I'm going to leave it. Is that your motion? I guess somebody should make one, huh? I make a motion, we leave it as is. Okay, and a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. And then the vote is? To leave it the way it's Leave it the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are there any nays? Morning. Three, four A's and one name. Right. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a CRS update. Uh, who okay. is in charge of that, Jim? Um, Joel and I can get that. And we kind of already talked about that in closed session a little bit. Okay. The whole idea was the fact that we're going to be using the state debt recovery service more. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with using that, the accounts that are going to CRS are going to be um, fewer. It's going to be the ones that we don't have Social Security numbers and driver's license on. What? Um, you can't, um, I'm, and he can, people can refuse to give you their Social Security number, can't they? They can. We do ask for it when uh, service is set up, but it is not required under the law. 
has the state have a bigger hammer than CR, CRC? Well, the Department of Revenue is running this, so I'm, I'm not sure if they're I'm not sure where they're going to get their information as to where to pursue wage garnishments. But something tells me they're going to have more resources than well, CRS. Well, now is that be. the national, a national level or the state? It'll be state. State level. Okay. Yeah. So they have the ability to garnish wages. They can go um, garnish assets. Um, and they'll also, at the same time, they're kind of running the TRIP program at the same time. So any um, uh, state tax refunds or lottery winnings will also be subject to their jurisdiction. So we just want to kind of want to give the commission an update on that little bit of change of how um, uncollectible accounts are run through the system. Okay. Are there any other questions of either of them? Okay, then we'll go to electric financials and the rate of return. Um, what we wanted to talk about today was um, kind of estimating out the rate of return where we're going in electric. Um, last year, we ended the year at a 2.38 um, rate of return. Um, That's less than what we can do. We, we're authorized to do 7%. Right. And we're at 2.38 in 2012. Um, I'm estimating we're going to be right around 2.0% this year or a little bit lower. Um, and you'll see the financials next week at our regular commission meeting, but as of July, you know, we're essentially zero. We are at zero. Um, so that number will creep up um, the next half of the year, but it's going to be right around 2%. Are we going to uh, send in this to the Public Service Commission and see if we can increase the rates? Well, that's the next question that I've got for you is we've had some initial discussions with Shank, who's our auditors. Um, we would like to contract with Shank to start doing an initial study for the rate case. Um, starting in November is what we'd like to do and having discussions with, with Shank, um, that seems like a good time. What our timeline would be, we would do some of the initial work November, December. We would pause during year end, January, February, March, pick it up end of March, early April, kind of pick up this process again have the hearings, have it finalized, have it down to the PSC um, before a lot of other municipalities actually finalize their PSC report and that's when a lot of um, rate when cases a lot of come in at that point. In PSC. Exactly. So a lot of people wait until after that PSC report comes out and they say, okay, my rate of return is mm -hmm. less than desirable, so we need to go in for a rate case. Um, and that would be the intention we'd like to do. Um, the estimate from Shank um, was between eight to twelve thousand dollars to assist us with the rate case, depending on um, the number of large customers, the complexity of what we want to do, how we want to do it, um, who they need to talk to, um, and just kind of those pieces. But like anything with consultants, is that who we've always used? Um, we haven't. I, I don't know who they used last time. I believe they used Virtual Kraus, Baker oh. Chili at the time. They were our audit firm. Mm -hmm. um, so we tried to use the audit firm that we're using just because they're familiar with our numbers. And so who is Shank? Shank is our current auditors. Oh, We've okay. had them for so we three years. We did. Okay. Um, just to kind of keep in mind, the reason we want to go in for a rate case is not simply because our rate of return is where it's at. I mean, that's a, a big factor of it, but there's things we need to look at. Um, we don't currently have a rate for um, LED streetlights and um, that or having city-owned streetlights, so we don't have a rate for those. Um, the city purchases most of the uh, streetlights we have now, so the rate isn't a true rate. And also with LED streetlights, we can't bill them out today because we don't have a rate for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of them out there. There's maybe 15 to 20. I know the city would like to do more of them, so that's one of the... We have to Will that be an advantage to them or an uh, advantage to us? Well, we don't have the rate yet, so we don't exactly know. Mm -hmm. We know they use less energy. Mm -hmm. um, there's questions about the life expectancy of the lamp. But, mm -hmm. um, well, they did um, remove some of the stoplights to save electricity for the city. Mm -hmm. So, um, Two other things. We don't have... Um, as strong as a time of day differential. So some people that can, if you're a residential time of day person, um, if you're somebody that works, um, you can really switch to a time of day rate and not have to make a lot of changes um, to your lifestyle to, to save money. And the whole idea of a time of day rate 
is to um, really incentivize a person to make lifestyle changes. Um, so changing those either on peak, off peak times or the, the cost for on peak and off peak charges um, would be a little bit um, more advantageous to get customers to. Is our soft, the software we have um, be able to accommodate that? Yes, I mean that's why we will, we're looking at it now with the AMI meters. Now we have a, a few year history of what everybody's hourly consumption is, so then we can more match that up with our our peaks from a wholesale power supply standpoint, what we're paying, and adjust those to our to our time of day rates. Mm -hmm. um, and the other issue is, you know, since we have been working with with glue the past several years on more diversifying their power supply portfolio. We've had rate reductions the last two years and there's one projected again again I think again for next year. So this <clears throat> will probably be shifting costs from power supply to the distribution side. So we're thinking it's not going to be that large of an increase because we're actually will be reducing the PCA part of the bill and then increasing the distribution side of things. So we're, you know, we're hoping it's going to be around or under 5% with all the adjustments we got on most of it. We need to hire the consultant to work with Jeff to get through all the numbers to see where we're at. Now this is something we wouldn't file this year. We'd get the report done and conceivably look at what filing next spring maybe. Mm -hmm. right. And we make sure we get, let the city know what's going on and get there. I, and everything, but first we've got to get the analysis done to see where we go. I wish we could get that word out to more people. You know, I haven't talked to one person yet that doesn't realize that their electric bills were cut last year. And because of those savings, it put a million dollars back into the city of Wisconsin Rapids economy. And there's, I haven't talked to one person that knows that. Somehow we got to get the word out that you know, there's that savings out there for the customer. Well, we maybe can cover it in a newsletter or something like that in the future. Probably better in the newsletter than um, on a computer simply or the internet simply because there's some people that just don't go on the internet and check those things. With our smart meters too, we do have additional options um, that we may desire, desire to design some rates around, you know, interruptible power, you know, for some residential or you know customers that might want to be on a rate like that, um, something we didn't have the opportunity to do at the last rate, last rate case. Um, so there's just more technology, more things that we can do with this rate case and um, really make it beneficial for the consumer. So again, now we have the money budgeted for this year. There's plenty in in our services account where the attorneys and consultants and all that are hired. We didn't use much of it this year, so it's already budgeted, but I'd still like a motion to hire Shank to do the analysis and not to exceed number that I think Jeff has worked with him on, which is what? Like around 12,000 or so. I think we need to do that if we're gonna make a decision on whether. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, yeah. So I, I don't think it's, I mean, I just think we really should do that. So I'd make that motion. Oh, second. All in favor? Who made the second? No, nope. I did. Oh, okay. okay. Um, can I have, well, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, does any of the, uh, um, like some of the capital projects to push off to hold the rate? I mean, is, is that. Well, we're going to be talking that through the budget. We're going to do the budget instead of November where we normally do the approval. I think we're going to shoot for October. So yeah, all those things will be flushed out, capital mm -hmm. for next year, O&M, and all that stuff. Because, right? you know, we, we do have a pretty aggressive schedule, I thought, as far as, you know, going ahead forward and, and uh, you know. Well, it changes know. from year to year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, those will be some things that we can look at as we go through the budget process. Yeah. It is, um, and those numbers, once we get the budget, those will be the numbers Shank plugs in. Yeah. Set 2014 as the baseline. They have to have a baseline year when they file the rate case at the PSC. Okay. So yes, you're correct. We'll have all the opportunity to do that. We'll probably have a special commission meeting because it usually takes us almost a day to get through the full budget or at least a morning or afternoon, line yeah. by line. So. So yes, you'll have that opportunity. Okay. 
Okay, then I think we had a motion and a second. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Educational topic, pilot. Keeping the um, paper industry in. I'm doing my best to keep our town going. Uh, keep that paper rolling. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just teasing you, Jeff, because uh, it's much easier for us to to see when we visually can see it like this. Exactly, and that's you know. What I'm going for, and I, with a small room, I don't want to try to use a projector, and I think it's nice to have a paper in front of you sometimes. Right. Um, what I wanted to do is just take five minutes and kind of give a little update on what pilot is and how it affects us. Um, this is particularly important as we go through the budget process. Again, kind of a disclaimer, um, what we're talking about today is just the cost of pilot. Um, understanding there's a cost of having a reliable system and the cost of not having a reliable system. So this is just kind of the piece of what we're paying to the city and pilot and kind of the, the process of that. Um, so the history of pilot, it's really been around um, in some form since around 1918. Um, the Public Service Commission kind of codified it in 1955 and kind of said here's how pilot is calculated. And the whole idea of it was to put municipal um, utilities and investor-owned utilities kind of at a, at a same level, um, saying here's the cost. An investor-owned utility is paying revenue, taxes, and all this stuff, and a municipal was not, so kind of keeping um, competition the same um, for those different utilities. That's, that's the intent, but has it stayed that way? Well, we'll get there. It hasn't, unfortunately. <laughs> so. Um, in 1985, investor-owned utilities um, had it changed. They used to pay property taxes on all of their utilities, the same as what pilot is designed to be. Um, they changed to a gross receipt tax, which is a flat tax on revenues. Um, pilot wasn't changed at that time. We'll get into gross receipts in a little bit to kind of see what that difference is. Um, when we're looking at pilot, though, pilot really is based on the gross book value of the total plant. So it's nothing to do with your revenues. It's all on um, what you've got out there for fixed assets and service um, as of January 1st each year. It also includes plant contributed from outside sources. So, for example, when we're doing um, a service run, um, an example would be um, CVS when they just went in, you know, they contribute capital because they're building a new building. Um, that ends up being part of our total plant, even though, you know, the commission <coughs> has decided, you know, we're going to do this as part of the capital piece. It becomes an asset of the commission and of the utility. So that's kind of included in the whole uh, gross receipt, or I'm sorry, the pilot calculation. Um, just kind of an interesting thing when you're looking at the elements of how pilots calculated. Um, it does include both the local and the school tax component when we're looking at the tax rates. Um, and PSC did a recent study in 2012, um, and they're unable to identify any instances of this revenue sharing from the city to the school and the um, technical college districts. Um, so it remains with the municipalities, it doesn't get distributed. Um, not right or wrong, it's just the process, it's how the law is written, um, and uh, it's how it's, the law is kind of formatted out there. Again, when we're looking at the calculation in a minute, it's the maximum amount that can be charged um, under pilot. In 2011, uh, there's 97 class AB water facilities, which is the same class we're at um, here at Wisconsin Rapids. 15 out of those 97 had a lower than authorized, lower than the maximum authorized pilot payment. So they had arrangements with their city to say, you know, we need to pay a little bit less um, for these. Where did charges. we stand? We pay the full amount. And I'll show you that calculation in, uh, in two minutes. The calculation to get to our pilot cost, it's a little complex, but we can walk through it. Um, again, we start with our utility plant and service. Um, this is the, the, the gross cost of that plant and service, so um, if it costs $10,000 for that hydrant that's out, outside 10 years ago, 
um, that's the cost that we're paying pilot on. It's kind of this, you know, the whole idea is the same as a property tax. So you're taking the cost of that asset, we're adding any of the materials and supplies. At January 1st, we're saying here's materials and supplies. Again, like a business, you know, you're paying um, tax on that uh, material and supply that's in there. We subtract out any plant outside of city limits. Um, we end up paying gross receipts tax to the state on that, kind of like an investor-owned utility. So we're only paying tax on, um, to the city of Wisconsin Rapids for um, assets within the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Um, we, we multiply that number by the assessment ratio, and that comes from the city's assessor office saying, you know, the percentage of um, actual cost to the percentage of what the value is of that times it by the city's tax rate, which again includes the uh, state and local, or the local and school tax component of that. The assets that we have outside the city limits go to the town of Grand Rapids? And those actually go to the state. To the state. Those go to the state and then they get distributed through mm -hmm. the gross receipt okay. tax. And um, that becomes our pilot payment. And if you turn the page here, you can see kind of the calculation from 2012 with the numbers plugged in. Um, so you can see for electric, we had right around just under $50 million of plant and service. Add our materials and supplies that were in place. Subtract out plant outside the limit, so all the lines, um, underground cable, everything that's outside city limits. Comes up with our subtotal, which is $39.447 million of plant inside city limits. Times by the assessment ratio, this was the same assessment ratio that was on all city of Wisconsin Rapids taxpayers. Uh, property tax bills, which kind of says that's the true cost or the true current value of those assets, times by the tax rate, which was $23.553 per thousand, uh, which comes up with our pilot payment for this for the electric utility was $863,000, um, and for the water was $678,000. Does that go to the state? That's what goes to the city, so the pilot payment goes directly to the city. So we, we calculate this in 2012, we pay this in 2013. Um, so this is over and above, uh, when, when they say we pay 1.5 million in taxes, that includes the pilot? This is the 1.5 million, right, mm -hmm. essentially. So it's 863 for the electric, mm -hmm. it's 678,000 for water. Um, so if you look at it, pilot as a percentage of revenues, 3.19% um, for um, electric, 13.3% for water. The big disparity in why the PSC did their um, report in 2012 is, you know, on the water side, you've got high cost of infrastructure. It costs a lot to put pipe in the ground, um, to run all the services out there that need to be done, to have a water filtration plant done. Um, but your revenues are a lot lower than electric. I mean, our revenues in 2012 for electric were $27 million. For water, they were just over $5 million. So your, your cost per dollar for your fixed assets is a lot lower in water than it is for electric. Um, said another way, you know, $13.3 out of every $100 of water bill is going to pay for other city services other city programs and other city services because that's going to the city. Again, the state average is 15%, um, so we're below that. Um, there were some cases, um, it was Ironton Water Utility down in Sauk County, they are actually at about 66% um, pilot payment to uh, their city based on their water utility. They were a very small water utility. They only have like $35,000 of revenue. But again, the cost of infrastructure is almost a million dollars and you're paying on that cost of infrastructure. It's got nothing to do with your revenue. Um, so kind of a, a pilot example, you know, um, if you turn the page and you look, if we pay the city $500,000 to replace water mains over the course of the year, and that's typically, you know, what it comes down to, Right around five to six hundred thousand dollars of new water main construction in the last couple of years. Um, let's just say tax rates stay consistent at what we paid in 2012. Um, that additional water main increase is going to cost um, about eleven thousand dollars a year in pilot payments 
indefinitely until that water main is either retired or replaced. Um, and then the PSC does their calculations. They give us a depreciation rate on water mains of 1.3%, basically meaning that what that water main useful life is around 77 years. So I mean, we're going to be paying pilot on those things for a long time. But 77 years doesn't seem logical, uh, does it? For, I mean, water uh, main for a water uh, line, um, the only reason I say that is um, we are replacing our water lines in the cemetery this year, mm -hmm. and um, they haven't been in that long, but let me tell you, there's a lot of holes in it, and it's costing us too much money to replace them. We're taking them all out and putting PFC so that we can replace any problems ourselves. Sure. And and so uh, I, I can't remember the exact year that um, uh, George Meade put that in, 1933, I think. So when you think of 33 and, uh, and we're replacing everything right now because of necessity. So that was in there for 80 years? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, and they should have been done before this. We didn't have the money to do it. What is the uh, what is the material you're removing? Is it galvanized? Is it copper? What is it? All different kinds. No, and not very consistent. And actually, uh, to be specific, um, I'm not over there to check because they have started uh, and we're doing the outside lines and changing things around. And the only reason we are able to do it is because some nice gentleman died in, um, in his estate, gave us $106,000 to do it. So, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. And, it, you know, it, it comes down to water main in the ground will last a long time. It's buried deep, it's going to be there. But, yeah, we do have breaks every year. There's breaks happening and they repair the breaks. It doesn't mean that whole section of pipe is bad. It means, you know, they fix the problem and they go from there. But um, I guess based on your, your explanation, yeah, I think that 70 years is probably... We're not putting the lines to go deep because we won't be using metal, so we won't have to worry as much about um, about them freezing and breaking. Sure. But in the city, they don't have any choice. They'll have to be deep right. as a protection. Exactly. So um, just kind of give the commission a little bit of updates on projects we're looking at. Um, since this um, is based on our total plant and service, um, you know, there's always been questions. You look at the, the PSC report, you look at our financial statements, it's got that number, $49 million of plant and electric and $38 million of water. Um, we don't have a detailed plant ledger saying, you know, this piece of pipe was put in in 1937, this one was 1938. Um, they've kind of gone through on the water side and done their GIS updates. They're doing it on the electric side right now where they're physically going out you know, finding each one of our assets. So at that point, you know, we're going to have a very good subsystem of uh, data to say these, this is our true plant and service um, to make sure that number's not overstated, you know, over the course of the hundred years the utility's been in business to say, you know, has there been plant that hasn't been retired? You know, they might put new water main in in 1972, but did they forget to take that piece of water main out that was put in originally with the city or something. So just going through and making sure we've got um, true numbers for what our plant and service is. We're also going through where we can on um, doing physical plant inventory. Um, Tate and I have started the, the planning work on this, so we're going to verify kind of the physical plant assets that are out there, kind of above and beyond the GIS piece. Obviously we can't go down and say, yep, there's water main down there and here's how much there is, but um, we can go out and say, yes, you know, we've got all these vehicles in service, we've got this communication equipment, um, and just kind of making sure again, just like the GIS side is going to show us, here's the electrical assets in service, we can say, here's the other pieces of physical, you know, inventory that's, or physical plant that's in service right now. Um, so over the next year or two, we should have that completed have a good number and have a, a true subsystem of what our fixed assets are within the system. And then we'll be able to adjust that, that um, number up or down as far as what that number is um, for plant and service. Um, 
we did touch base. I kind of just mentioned real briefly the, the gross receipts tax. Um, so that's what we pay on plant outside city limits. Um, we end up paying this gross receipts tax. And for our utility, it's 3.19% of revenue generated outside of the city um, gets paid to the state. And that goes down to Madison, and then they distribute that how they distribute it. Um, but you know, if this would be an investor-owned utility, if we were under the same guidelines as um, an investor-owned utility and we just paid straight up gross receipts tax, um, this is what this calculation is showing us. Again, it's based on your revenue. It's got nothing to do with your plant and service. Um, so that's why the water payment is reduced um, greatly because, you, again, you're basing it on the revenues. Um, so on the electric side, it's basically a wash. Um, we'd pay $600 less in uh, taxes if we were on Did you say the investor-owned is different than us? That investor-owned utilities do not pay pilot. Mm -hmm. They pay simply this gross receipts tax. Does that come out to be more or less? Well, for us, for an electric utility, it would pretty much be a wash mm -hmm. because of you know what we're paying to the city today. It's, it's um, this calculation showing it would be the same. But on the water side, it would be a lot less because we'd only pay 3.2% okay. of our revenues which would come out to about $162,000. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't matter if we put in all new water main across the city at a cost of $100 million. It wouldn't look at that at all. Um, it would just say, we want 3% of your revenue off the top and we're done. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, where the, where the plan started originally 50 years ago when they codified, you know, the pilot payment to kind of keep in line with them. Um, and where we're at today. And it's, it's a problem for all um, local, small municipalities, large municipalities. Everyone has this issue, and especially as um, on the water side, I think a lot of small municipalities have aging infrastructure. Um, I know I've talked with Dale up at Beer, and you know, they've got a lot of problems with their water mains going up there. And they put in new water mains, you know, that cost of pilot payment to the city increases. Um, as calculated unless, you know, they decide to have an agreement with the city um, on that. So just kind of, you know, this was one of the things when I came in that was interesting to me, so I wanted to make sure, you know, the commission was kind of aware of at least how this is calculated and what the ramifications are. So as we look at budget next year, I'm not saying, you know, we can't do these projects or don't recommend we do these projects because of the pilot costs, but just knowing the cost, the true cost of that project, you know, is these pilot payments included in it. So with that, does anybody have any questions on pilot or? Which in theory, the pilot payments do benefit the city of Wisconsin Rapids and its residents. There's no doubt about it versus all the what an IOU would pay. So and there's a benefit to it. And definitely, you know, that the cost to run the city is the cost to run the city. and if if it wasn't included in pilot payments, it would be received from other sources. So, you know, as a, as a citizen of the city, you know, you're going to pay those taxes in some form or another. So basically, if we're, if there's going to be like $516,000 less going in, the city's going to have to make that up in another way? Right. Right now they're getting that money to provide other services to city residents. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Jack? Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the AP payment register discussion. Um, the You're getting a workout today. I am. I'm you? getting kind of tired of talking. You're probably getting tired of listening to me. But, um, with the AP register discussion, um, we just wanted to bring it up here. Um, this is the report you get in the packet every month, and I, I'm sorry I didn't bring a copy, but you probably all remember it. It's got the detail, um, who received a payment, what the amount was, and kind of a description of services. Um, as um, our commission packets are dispersed more and are put online more um, to keep kind of things open and going, um, we need to make sure that the information on there that needs to be confidential is held confidential. And a number of cases have come up in the last couple months where a check might go out for something that could potentially should have been limited as far as its distribution. Um, there's been issues, you know, if we have any garnishments 
um, for employees, typically the first payment we have to pay um, as a check. So that would have been on there saying, you know, Jeff Kuhn has a garnishment for some, you know, to the Department of Revenue for unpaid taxes or something. Well, that's something we really shouldn't have on our, on our um, payment register and out on our website and public information for everybody to see. Um, in addition, there's also when we have um, refunds for inactive services um, under the new rules um, with the PSC, we can't disclose any customer's status of their account. So on there it says, you know, you've got a refund for an inactive account. Um, there could be questions on there. Are we are we breaking the rules as far as you know giving that information out to the to the commissioners here? So, a couple of options we could do, and um, just wanted to float this past the commission and hopefully have them make a decision. We could either change that report to not have so much detail on it, just give you the name and the amount, um, or we could have a special finance meeting. I don't know if we could do it every other month or every quarter to have those approved. Um, and then kind of give the option um, to have further discussion at that well, it's point. It's more of a review because, I mean, they're already paid anyway, so we could take advantage of discounts that were short payment and we didn't have any late payments. So, I mean, when I first got it, we changed that to a, to a review of the expenses and not yeah. approve them because they're already in the budget anyway. So this, you know, however you choose to do this, I guess would be would be fine, just knowing that they're already essentially uh, paid. So you'd right. just be looking at them in a different format than putting them all in every packet. And we could do it at, a, you know, at an, as Jeff said, at a finance committee meeting or whatever. Are you able to exclude those from a packet report that we get? <clears throat> um, they would be that affect your reporting then. Well, you know, I think eventually we'll talk about you know all the financial information that the commission does receive today from us and see you know if there's changes we want made to it. But you know, as of today, we still have the commission sign off that those yes, expenses yeah. are right. Uh, right. reviewed. Um, so that could still happen. Then it would just be, do you want to see a different format? You know, do we want to have a summary version of that report, or do we want to take that? To a finance committee to say, you know, kind of give the full detail to the finance committee and allow them to ask questions or you know deal with it at that point. Does the city give a similar report to every, uh, their own? Woman? Yes, there's a like a red, register that, and I noticed that too. Occasionally there'll be a name on there, and I I don't know what what Tim has decided to do with that. If you might just manually, <laughs> you know, black. Out the name or the, the code or whatever, um, but we don't have it on a website or anything like that. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I would recommend that we just have a, a finance committee meeting and sit down, and that's what you guys do: review all everything that's in there and ask questions that you might have. And I, I think it's important that we review all the expenses. I, agree. I mean, that's that's why we're really here. And, and I don't, I, I'm still under what would you have to black out? Um, like. If there's a, um, if we do a credit refund for an inactive account, okay, you know, under the letter of the law, we would be giving out the status of that person's account to the public because our packet is getting more dispersed and it's out there and it's public information. It's on our website at this point, so we could black out names at that point. I mean, if if we want to go with something like that, yeah. And usually, though, the people that would be in that category, mm -hmm. there's probably a contest between. Us and the uh, supplier. Is that true? Um, Aren't the, isn't that the amount that they, if they have to pay so much in and then they don't use it all, we're returning it? Right. I don't yeah. see a big deal about yeah, that. I, I don't get that's, that's exactly how I well, do it. You're technically just disclosing an account balance for that individual. That's right. what you're doing. But we can't do that under the new law. We can't do that under the new law for an individual's account balance. It's the same, you know, it's yeah, the same principle, you can't... Well, I, I didn't think that's, that's essentially the reason that we moved accounts written off to this format. It used to happen in open session with a regular commission meeting each month, but these same concerns prompted us to, if, to do it here. If, if you pay so much and you paid overpay and then they pay it back, that isn't knowing what their total account is. Know, it's still knowing something about the... Oh. 
Are you going to have to physically black out that line for our monthly report, Jeff, or if is there a way you can create a report that would exclude that? About I think for the short-term fix, it would be black you know, black it out. You know, then we could determine long-term what yeah, sure. financial information right. the commission wants to see. Probably just the name would do it. At this point, yeah. 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 So we could go through at this point and um, black out the there's been and several it. lately because we're trying to get that caught up. Exactly. Well, I would make the motion to uh, change the format and, and refer that to the separate finance committee. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, review the monthly sure expenses. We do it on a monthly basis. Who gets them? Um, Joe and I. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. It's been a pleasure. Okay. As good we can. Yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, you look at him. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Move on to the next one. Yeah. Do you want to so look through them and, or shall we adjourn and then we do them after? Yeah, either way is fine. You're just, uh, you're just then everybody won't have to wait. Yeah. So I can have a motion to adjourn and uh, you'll have to wait for me for a few minutes, John. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do that. <laughs> I apologize. Don't I shouldn't tease you, but. No, that's, I deserve it. Okay. I don't know if there was a, mo a motion made or second, but. Uh, Put anybody's name down that you want. <laughs> but for adjournment or the yeah. for the adjournment. For, okay. Yeah. I'll make a second if you need a name. 